Today, we will be putting our national airline to the test on this 13 hour long haul flight from London to Singapore on board their flagship aircraft, the massive A380. We all know how great Singapore Airlines first and business class really are, but does the same high standard apply to us travelling at the back of the bus in economy? Is all the hype about SQ being the best airline in the world really true? We will answer all these and more in this video. Glad that you are joining me today, so let me transport you back to London Heathrow Airport where this journey begins. Welcome to Short Transit. We are a small group of passionate travellers based in Singapore. From our tiny red dot, we aim to bring you along on journeys around the world, mainly focusing on Asian travel. Stay tuned for more detailed and informative trip reviews like this one. If you really like our videos and would like to help us grow, do give us a like and subscribe to our channel. Thank you. A very good morning from London Heathrow Airport. I've just arrived from central London on board the Heathrow Express from Paddington Station. Singapore Airlines, along with Star Alliance partners, currently operates out of Heathrow Terminal 2. There's not much of a queue at check-in this morning and I got my boarding pass in a jiffy. Before I knew it, I entered security and entered the transit area. I was immediately greeted by an array of shops and restaurants. It's worth noting that the gate number will only be shown about 45 minutes to 1 hour before the scheduled departure time. Usually, the gate Singapore Lines users are located at Concourse Terminal 2B, which easily takes up to 15 minutes on average to get there, so be sure to plan your time properly. There are even more shops located here, although there aren't as many shops as compared to the main terminal. I decided to relax at Cafe Nero with some plane spotting before making my way down to gate B42 for boarding. Here, I am greeted with my aircraft for today. Operating this flight is SV SKW, a 6 year old Airbus A380. Boarding started on time today, which however was slightly chaotic. Complimentary earpieces for the inflight entertainment are available by the aircraft door. Stepping on board, we can see that Singapore Airlines configure their economy class in the A380 in a typical 3-4-3 configuration. This is my seat for today, seat 43K, with a clean set of pillows and blankets waiting on my seat. Looking out the window and wow, we've got a seat with a great view of two turbo fans chatting us to Singapore today. The boarding process is soon completed and we are now pushing back from our gate. Let's enjoy this takeoff from runway 27 left. Okay, now a bit of information about this route that we are flying today. 
Singapore Alliance fly London Heathrow to Singapore Changi, a whopping 4 times daily using their biggest white body jets, the Boeing 777-300ER and the Double Decker A380. The other direct competitors are British Airways and Qantas with 2 and 1 daily flights respectively, with BA15 and QF1 continuing on to Sydney from Singapore. This results in 7 daily flights in this market, which is quite a lot of competition for such a long flight. Despite the competition, air tickets on Singapore Airlines aren't cheap on this route, with fares regularly hitting a whopping 1.5k for just one way on Singapore Airlines. Although you may sometimes find good deals if you book very early in advance or by booking round trip tickets. Today's flight will battle headwinds flying eastbound, taking 13 hours to fly to Singapore Changi, covering a distance of 6,758 miles. Now that we're in the air, let's take a look at this fancy seat we got here. Every seat features 32 inches of seat pitch, quite roomy for me who stands at 1.8 meters tall. One interesting thing that you don't really see on other airlines is this little hidden mirror attached onto the tray table. The tray table folds up from the seat in front and can be extended towards you. However, it's a little stiff to operate. Cup holder is also available. As well as a USB port, headphone jack and crew call buttons. A universal power outlet is also available under the seat. The seat pocket contains the usual safety card and a bath bag. Along with a brochure for the free in-flight Wi-Fi. As well as the duty free magazine. Yes, you heard me right, there's free Wi-Fi on this plane, but with a catch. More on that later. The seat is also equipped with an adjustable headrest for better head support. Let's also take a look at the in-flight entertainment, named Chris World. Here you can view the information regarding your flight, as well as to access the QR code for the menu. The screen is pretty responsive too. Browsing through the IFE, it seems like Chris World offers a pretty wide selection of movies spread across many categories and even has a category for Singapore produced movies. Not only that, there's even a wide selection of TV programs offered, spread across different categories from drama, anime to sport. There's also a music, library and game section, and along with a few channels of live TV. Regarding the in-flight Wi-Fi, it's free for passengers in all classes. If you have a Chris Flyer account, which is free to sign up on their website, you'll definitely not be bought on this aircraft, that's for sure. All in all, this is a pretty decent hard product to travel long haul in. An hour after takeoff, the breakfast meal service comments. For the main course, there were two options. The western option offers mushroom crepe with herb sauce, and the Asian option is a breakfast congee with minced chicken, a dish that you can easily find in hawker centers in Singapore. A yogurt and the fresh fruit were served with the meal. Of course, you can't forget about the usual bread and butter. I went with the breakfast congee with minced chicken option. The congee looked decent and tasted delicious. The bread roll meanwhile is as stiff as a rock. The fruit is pretty fresh and the yogurt is quite sweet. All these are served with red wipes and metal cutlery, a rarity in economy class these days. This was quite a decent breakfast, in my opinion. In economy class, amenities are available upon request. I requested an amenity kit and a pair of eye shades. The amenity kit contains a toothbrush with toothpaste as well as a pair of blue socks. Other amenities available include more disinfected wipes, a face mask as well as earplugs, all listed in the in-flight menu. Now let me take you through a tour of the lavatory. The lavatory was well stocked with basics and amenities such as paper cups, two brushes, sanitary pads, as well as hand lotion. The little bin here is equipped with a step to open function for less hand contact. The toilets were also kept pretty clean throughout the flight. 7 hours into the flight, my growling stomach led me in search of some food aboard. Entering the galley, there was a selection of snacks available on the self-service snack tray. Some alcoholic and non-alcoholic drinks were available too. Cabin crews were stationed in each galley to assist passengers with their needs. 
I was proactively given some potato chips by the cami crew, which I gladly brought back with me. They also helped to prepare some hot cup noodles to pamper my ever hungry tummy. As the sun set over the Middle East, I fell into a deep slumber. I was awakened by the supper meal service, which commenced 2 hours before landing. For this meal service, a orzo tomato spinach salad with shrimp is offered as the appetizer, with two choices offered for the main course. One is the pan roasted fillet of fish with lemon white wine sauce, and the other being braised chicken with shiitake in soy sauce. A double chocolate mousse is offered for dessert, and the meal came along with the standard bread and butter. I went with the fish option. The appetizer was quite flavorful, but unfortunately, I couldn't say the same for the main course. I found that the white sauce in the main course left a rather awful aftertaste, which ruined the dish as a whole. Like the breakfast meal, a cup of water is provided along with a beverage of a choice, and once again, the bread was served solid hard. Not gonna lie, it's quite weird having supper as the next meal after breakfast. I guess that's one of the quirks of flying long haul. As we cruised along the west coast of Malaysia, the flight was coming to an end, so allow me to share my opinions on this flight. First of all, the chemical crew on this flight were exceptional, doing their best to elevate the passenger experience, and are very proactive and friendly throughout the flight. The hard product was pretty decent too, with quite a roomy, well padded seat, coupled with a very responsive screen, plus a large movie selection to keep us well entertained and comfortable in the sky. The unlimited free Wi-Fi also allows for work to be done, as well as connecting with loved ones on the ground. The reintroduction of the appetizer for the meal was quite a welcome move too. However, there are some areas of improvement that can help make this a more pleasant flight. The most significant thing that stood out is that there is no proper snack or meal service between the 10 hours where breakfast and supper were served, which left me quite hungry. Luckily, there were snacks available in the gaiety, so many fellow travellers and I also requested snacks and cup noodles mid-flight. But it would be great if something more substantial like a pastry and drink were served. Another area of improvement is the meal quality for this flight. Even though the first meal was quite decent, it was quite disappointing that the second meal had a pretty bad aftertaste. Not to mention that all bread rolls served on this flight were solid hard. Now let's enjoy this landing in Singapore. Welcome to Singapore, I'm pretty glad to be back home. Despite some of the shortcomings of this flight, I do really enjoy my time on board Singapore Airlines. They offer a very high standard of service on their flights, even in economy class, and it's an enjoyable and comfortable way to travel long haul. If the price is right, I would not hesitate to fly with them long haul again. They are indeed one of the best airlines in the world, even in economy class. Thank you for joining me on this journey. Do remember to like and subscribe. And click on this video next to see how it's like flying on Southeast Asia's cheapest airline. See you soon.